Hi guys, Crafting Redstone here, and welcome back to another Redstone tutorial. Now, in today's video, what we're going to be taking a look at is a compact graphics processing unit, which is right in front of me over there. So, it is very compact, and it's extremely quick, and it's a really cool new design, and I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial on it, and take you through how it works, and all the different functions it has, so I hope you're really excited for this. Um, I guess let's get started. So, let's have a bit of an overview of this GPU. Now, I believe it is one of the fastest GPUs going, and it decodes information in about 0.5 of a second so it's extremely quick and you have 14 inputs and 10 outputs now each of the sections have three functions which can be selected individually so you don't have to do the same function for the X and Y you can do different functions just to make it a bit quicker so you don't have to run this twice so yeah it's very very compact as well as you can see there is a big jumble of redstone wires which make it pretty compact and it goes really quickly and the decoders are extremely fast because these are the decoders I use for in that video with the fastest redstone decoders. So they allow you to select the what you want to output in about a quarter of a second. So we're going to have a bit of a more detailed look at each of the inputs, the outputs and the processes and I guess we're going to get started with that now. So we have got 14 inputs, 7 for the X and 7 for the Y, although the X and Y are interchangeable, you don't have to have the blue as X and the red as Y, you can have the red as X and blue as Y for example. And as I mentioned a second ago, you do not have to do the same process for the X and Y. This is what's really good about the design, you can select different processes to output. So let's have a bit of a look at this. Over here we have got the decoder for the X, and we've got the 5 inputs for the X, and over here we've got the 5 inputs for the Y, and the decoders for the Y. So first of all, the first function, which you can select, is just output the pixels. So we're going to put some pixels in here, so 1 and 4 on the X, and oh, 4, and 3 and 2 on the Y. So let's do those two. And you can see with this function selected, it just outputs the pixels as they are without changing them at all. So that would be just like if you had a Y going straight through. However, you can then invert these signals. So I'm only going to invert one to show you that it is changeable. You don't have to use the same process on both. So over, over here you can see it's inverted. So 1 and 4 are now out, but three, sorry, 2, 3 and 5 are now on, but it still stays the same on the Y. So the final function, what is in this decoder and GPU, is the fill command. So it's actually not going to work on a Y because we've got two pixels and they're adjacent to each other so it's got nothing to fill in between. So you can see it just outputs as usual. But on this one for example, if we fill in the gaps between 1 and 4, it should fill in 1, 2, 3 and 4 when it outputs. So you can see if we move over here, it's got 1, 2, 3 and 4 outputted. That's what makes this a GPU. It allows you to make squares, rectangles, etc. And it's really, really useful having that fill command because it just means you don't have to send as much information through. So, let's have a bit of a look in detail of how this works. So here what we've got are all the functions spread out, unlike in there where they're all compacted together, just to make a bit clearer what they do. Now the first one is pretty obvious what it does, it just allows the signal straight through. Although it does do a few inversions on that one over there, just so you can select the output properly. But here you can see, it just allows the signal straight through, very very simple. And that is what the one which allows it straight through to do. So now the invert, you just have a redstone torch there and you can see it just inverts signal so again very very simple now the only drawback from this design with the fill command is it is not pistonless it does involve pistons but it is really really very fast with those pistons it only takes two ticks as you can see so what it does if we just select two actually probably select the middle pixels let's do that so two and four what it does it has two redstone wires which come over over through here and basically what happens with a piston is push forwards, I did not mean to press that block then, a piston is pushed forwards and blocks this redstone signal, so let's pop, pop that back, you can see it's blocked the redstone signal and won't allow it to go through anymore, so because it's blocked it, it means that the signals in between are also blocked and then you just have to invert that to get your output, so let's have a look at another example, so we'll just unblock that. You can see that the redstone signal travels all the way up here and is only blocked by this piston which then lights up this torch. But if you want to block it right at the beginning, you can see it's blocked the signal so all these turn off and then all the torches turn on because they're all off. So that is how the inversion works. So this is how the fill works 
and I believe it is a completely new design and it's very fast and I'm very pleased that I managed to make it so compact, although it does have the drawback of using pistons. But as you can see, it's very efficient and just takes um, two ticks, which is half a second to produce an output. That is the one that takes the longest time to process in this GPU. So there are all the commands laid out separately and now let's move back to the GPU to have a look how this works. So as soon as you select the inputs, all the commands and all the processes are calculated, but none of them allowed to filter out the output yet. Um, so what happens, you've got this NOR gate matrix and basically it works basically like an AND gate and depending on what you select, it will only allow those signals through. So as you can see at the moment, this redstone wire on top is off, which allows the torches to turn on. So if we move back here, you can see we've got all our outputs back here from the processes. And when this torch turns off, it allows those signals through to the outputs. So let's select a different one just so you can see it a bit better. Let's select number two. And now you can see this torch, this wire is turned off, which allows the outputs from this line to go through to the outputs. So you can see it travels up this glowstone and then back down to over here. So that's where you'd use the output. So it's very, very simple. And I guess we're going to build one little section from this GPU with a decoder just to show you how it basically works and so you can build it for yourself. So I d there isn't going to be a world download for now for this but there may be in the future. So we're going to make this design a fair bit smaller. So we're going to just do three inputs like so and we're just going to put some um, redstone lamps here just so you can see what the inputs are and we're just going to put some torches like so. So now if you have a look over here we're just building this blue bit here. So now what you need are the redstone glowstone towers even, and these just go up like so, not like that. I guess I'll probably build this in a bit of a time up starting from now. So here are all our functions made and we've got all the outputs but you may notice something a bit funny. All our processes are all inverted so as you see the fill commands are all on despite all the inputs being off and you can see the inverts are all off despite being, the, um, despite being our inputs off so they should be on in theory and our allowing straight through line is on although the inputs are off. So this is where the NOR Norgate matrix comes in and as you can see they all use torches so they'll all be inverted again for the outputs So that is why they are all inverted over here. So I guess we can build a bit of that on camera So what you want to do is build lines like this coming across So you can see we've put lines up here and you just want to make sure all these signals above are blocked off so it should look something like this. Now, where all the inputs are, you want to place torches on the other side like so. You want to just place them like this. And you can see it has inverted our inputs from over here. So that is why you wanted them inverted earlier. So now what you want to do, you want to build the outputs. So you want to bring these out here a little bit. So now you've got these glowstone towers, you can just place redstone on top of them. Now just to mention that half slabs will work exactly the same, so if you wanted to use half slabs then just put them in, just personal days where you want to use half slabs, glowstone, don't know if sea lanterns work actually, that might be one to check. Um, so we'll place all these in, like so, 
So as you can see, we've now got all our outputs. Now at the moment, it's select we're selecting every single process. So what we want to do is invert all these, but this is where this decoder comes in. So what you want to do is build two inputs down here. So we can have the decoder like so, and like so. And you need to move these over by a bit because otherwise there won't be enough room. So you want them just to look a bit like that, just so you can move the signals over. So we're wanting all, basically the reason why I put them over in the first place is so all the inputs are on like in the equal um, spacing. So that's why we've done it like this. And now you just want to build a glowstone up like so. And again, I'll just build this very quickly. So here we go, the glowstone towers are built. And in the last clip, I did build them one block too far down. So you can see we just raised it all up by one. So now what you want to do, you want to build little blocks out here. So now the final thing to do is just place a torch here, a torch here, and two torches here with repeaters on the ones you left blank. So if we come over here and place a repeater there, and we want to place a repeater there. So that is it done. This is the design, and you, these outputs are currently high up. If you just wanted to bring them down to the lower level, you'd just bring them down like this. and. You know, just do that for them, put some redstone wire on top, and that's just what I did over there, just so the outputs are at the same level as the inputs, as you can see. So this is designed, it is expandable if you did want to build more of it, and you just put some pistons out here like so, and I will just demonstrate how it works. Again, so I will just press those. <laughs> An issue with not having redstone on top of there, so let's pop that on. You just need to make sure you check all the redstone once you've done it, just if nothing's working, troubleshoot it. So you see it's outputted it as it is, and we want to now invert it, and turn that one off. So you can see it's now inverted it, and if you wanted to fill in the gaps, you would simply press them both down, to get the three in binary, and fill in all the gaps. So that is the Redstone GPU. So now the screen is built, we're just going to do a quick few demos of the different functions. So as you can see, I've already drawn something just to check. And we're just going to clear the screen by pressing this. And I have done a tutorial on this screen, as I said earlier. So check that out if you're interested. But let's move over here and have a look what I've got. So we're just going to want to export a filled in area. So I wanted to fill in, let's say, 1 to 4 on the Y coordinates. And let's do three and five on the x coordinates so you want to fill in this area we'll just click both of them on like so you'd want to generally do that instantly with redstone wires so let's just do it like so if we move over here you'll see it's filled in that area what we have just selected so that is the fill command so now i'm wanting to select all the edge pixels so just oh sorry the corner pixels so we're going to do it using this command here and actually it will probably select all the edge pixels as well using this one because it's not just plotting pixels so on this one we want to invert it so we're going to click this and on the other one we want to let the signal straight through so we're going to click this and if we move over here you'll see oh it has plotted all the corners so that is how it works so i hope you've enjoyed this uh, redstone tutorial so that is a basic overview on how you can connect a gpu to a screen and output um, the different processes which you can do so if you found that a bit helpful just seeing how it relates to the screens and everything so I guess I'll end this clip here so now we've built the GPU and have looked through it and explained how it works I'm guess I'm going to wrap up the video so I hope you really enjoyed this and please don't forget to like and share because I put a lot of effort into making each one of these contraptions because these are made from scratch and I've designed every part of them so please don't forget to like and share because it does really help out for future videos and I'll be releasing a few more videos. As you can see behind, we've got a seven-segment display, a sound card, and other things. So there'll be future videos, hopefully. And, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you are interested in those. So thank you so very much for watching this video. Hope you found it interesting, useful, and cool. So I guess I'll sign off here. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone.